Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlisle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlisle. That's a bit excessive, I think, considering the fact that I spotted no less than two routes to get inside the house unseen. We know what we're doing, sir. Don't worry about that. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution, handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. <laughs> 
Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. A hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case.
and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? That is the door to Rebecca's room. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Aaron Ford Jr. calling from Morgan Yates and Cone. I need to get a listing of asset transfers from the Carlisle account HTC Depot number 5085. Uh, no, I need it immediately. Yes, I'll hold. Yes, I'm still here. It doesn't exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Right. I'll double check and get back to you. I received the vault token for the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. Did I understand correctly that I should give it to Rebecca in case of your death? Exactly. She holds the other one. I want her to have the file on Arthur Edwards if I die. You're not fearful she will be in trouble if she knows? She will start digging when she realizes things don't add up, inevitably getting her in trouble. I'd rather she knew who she's up against. She's clever and resourceful. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to hit him where it hurts. But I don't want her to get involved prematurely. Hopefully she'll never have to get involved at all. If you only knew what we face. I wonder what you would do. Attack? Regroup? Close the gates and wait it out. Hello, sir. you never got to learn that the horrible thing we did was for nothing. To protect the Carlyle legacy, what bollocks. It's all gone, I fear. Bloody hell, how did I not see it? <laughs> I doubt our big brother could have botched it up any worse than I have, even if he'd tried. Did you find? Ah. Uh. Yates better well have a damn good reason for not being here in person. Christ! You really don't have a clue, do you? I'm talking about that weasel Arthur Edwards. Can we get back what he stole from me? So far, it looks like we can't. 
All the transfers of funds and privileges I've been through have been bulletproof. He intercepted the arrangements our office worked years to put in place. That's why Don Yates should be here. He made the arrangements. He should bloody well be the one to clean up this whole mess. I, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Don't kill the messenger, Alexa. Please, continue your efforts, Mr. Ford. Yates mentioned anything about the Carlisle account? Yes, I'm in England now. It's all gone. Ron and I haven't been briefed about shit. What the fuck do I say to Carlisle? I feel completely blindsided here. I have no idea what's going on. It's, it's all gone. No, she's calm as ice. It's, it's just not natural. Nobody's that calm. It's gonna end in murder, I'm telling you. Hi there. What is it, Fernsby? Mr. Edwards is not coping too well with the situation, I'm afraid. Oh, he is a useless wimp. If it's not one thing, it's another. If I may say so, these are challenging circumstances for everyone. It seems to be his role in the stage funeral event tomorrow that weighs on him. Christ! 
If he just grow up her. I believe he is calling his ex-wife again. It could end with legal consequences. The harassment charges from last time led to that restraining order. Should I talk to him? Maybe it's better if I have a word with him. If I may, madam. Yes, you might be right. Thank you, Fernsby. You faced great obstacles too, I know. We will persevere. It is my duty to make that happen. Looking good today, sir. My dear brother, finally in peace. How I regret the pact we made. How I wish I had acted on my own. The guilt over the life we took is what presses me forward. Always makes me want to make it worth the horrible sacrifice. But for you, it weighed you down, pulled you under. Never to resurface. Mr. Ford. Mrs. Carlyle. I... well, I... For heaven's sake, just say it. I looked into the Tokyo holdings, and my preliminary assessment is that they... they are gone. I don't need assessments. I need absolute confirmation. That's why you're here. I did request the documentation, but it will take a while, considering the time difference. You don't request, you demand! How Yates could send me someone like you is beyond me. Yeah, well, I don't feel too good. About that promotion I thought might be coming my way. Yeah, well, don't count on it. This is a shit assignment. No, I didn't expect this. Yates didn't even warn me, and now he doesn't return my calls. I just wish I was home. I love you too. Bye. Yeah, keep it real.
All well downstairs. How's Gregory handling the situation? Causing trouble or too lazy to give a damn? No, madam. He... he seems to be amused by the whole debacle. Huh! <laughs> he may be lazy, but he's not dumb. Having a laugh might well be the best way to handle it all. Would you like to see him? No. I need to address them all. I just have a few more things to get in order first. So for now, let him laugh. Soon there'll be nothing for him to laugh about. He may have to get off his arse and do some honest work. For centuries, the Carlyles have fought to prosper all of us alone. If we could only unite across time, we could crush them all. Hello, sir. How did it come to this, Zachary? Did you really do it? But why now? What we did broke you nearly 50 years ago. No. I refuse to believe it. Did you get confirmation from Tokyo? Mr. Gates, it's me, Aaron, again. I really need to talk to you about the Carlisle account. Something horrible has happened. It, it's all gone. I'm not quite sure how to handle it. Could you please call me back? Shit. I just threw up a little in my mouth. Oh, shit. This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47.
sir. Why now, Zachary? How can you leave me now? Hello there, sir. This is Emma and Gregory's room. Keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. An old letter, 47. Never opened. Must have slid under the secret door nearly 46 years ago. 
It states that Alexa Carlyle's older brother, Montgomery, wanted Alexa to become the heir to the Carlyle Empire instead of himself. Hmm. Interesting. You're an excellent detective, 47. Uncovering truths half a century old. If you frame it correctly, I believe you could use the information to convince Madame Carlyle that Zachary committed suicide. You're American. Maybe you should ask Mr. Fernsby to see her. Or perhaps you feel like digging a bit more. I don't like dancing. What about restaurants? You like food? I know some great places. You should come visit. I'll take you somewhere really nice. Spend a few bucks. A girl like you deserves that. I don't know. Yo, Anne, what's up? Relax, man. I said I'd get your money. It's just gonna take a little longer. Jeez, and how's that my fault? Just calm the fuck down, Ant. You know I'm good for it. I'm a Carlisle. I'm made of money. Just lean back and enjoy the interest. Meanwhile, go and have some drinks on me. No, Christ, I'm gonna hang up. Let's talk when you calm the fuck down. Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, OK? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexi used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Token to Manuel Carlyle's daughter. Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why I gave it to her, that sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler? Oh, of course. You look tanned. I bet Mother spent the last week at her Cypress estate. Am I right? I'm not at liberty to say, ma'am. Oh, come on. I need to know what's going on. This affects me too, you know.
Phil, did you find out if the vote was notarized? But how the hell did that happen? No, we all signed it. I gave it to him in person. Kind of explanation. It's bloody rude, that's what it is. Making us come here to play funeral and then show up like nothing's the least bit strange. Oh, don't get your knickers all twisted. I'm telling you, she's not fit to be in charge anymore. Rebecca Carlyle, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? Only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake.
Emmer Carlisle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, Mother, and the staff were all the company he had. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. You always led by example, rather than by words and meaningless gestures. Like hugs of encouragement. Just a simple spontaneous caress when I didn't have it. Right. I clearly remember when I was five. So 41 guests will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff just now. I know I have to, but Amy thinks she might be pregnant. I'm gonna be a dad. You'll be fine, Robbie. Kids are great. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe, like a real princess. 
But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. How are things coming along inside? Is everything ready for tomorrow? I'm getting a headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comforter or not, should I ask her to marry me? What if she says no? And then this big funeral thing tomorrow? It's the last thing I need. I remember how it was with the first one. The ones that come after certainly are a lot less of a worry. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside, except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother, Montgomery, 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Painkillers. Lethal use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? Groceries arrive. I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But that is safe with Ethel. She never misses a step. Gossiping and work both. Hello there, sir. Mary is so upset, and she's never seen a dead body before. Life can be tough sometimes. Alexa, back from the dead, a make-believe funeral, a murder mystery. Oh. A safe in Madame Carlyle's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. done in three days. He looks really good, though. Latest bad? Throw a fake funeral. It'll make your garden look great. You may laugh now, but I have a bad feeling we haven't seen the end of this. Bad news, I'm afraid. No, we don't have any extra fuses. Ethel looked everywhere. Oh, you've got to be kidding. No power, no portrait. 
Oh, Madame Carlyle will be furious. Uh, she expects the family photo to be done any moment now. I need this shoot to happen, okay? And I need it to be perfect. Can't we just take a piece from another block? Oh, I, I guess we could do that. Good. I'll finish setting up and then I'll wrap it just before you call down the family. Just keep calm. This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Why waste away in front of the books when he can play like that? The music makes my heart so warm. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Sir. How 
are you? How are you today, sir? This is Madame Carlyle's office. Please step inside. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. Oh, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Your brother committed suicide. I need to see some evidence to believe that, Mr. Whitmer. Zachary was found dead in a room locked from the inside. He died from a rare poisonous plant he cultivated himself. He believed you were dead, and a suicide note explained that he did not have the courage to go on without you. That's what I don't buy. I cared for him deeply, but the truth is he hated my guts. My death would not make him commit suicide, I can promise you that. Perhaps the death of your older brother, Montgomery, then. I have found evidence showing that you and Zachary killed him nearly 50 years ago. I believe that was when Zachary turned recluse. Your brother recently uncovered proof that your past deeds were for nothing. A letter from Montgomery stating that he wanted you, Madame Carlyle, to take over from your father instead of himself, as you were better suited to the job. Everything would have turned out the way you wanted, without anyone dying. What broke Zachary once, now destroyed him. And you saw this letter? I did. Oh, Zachary. How royally I fucked up. Mr. Whitmer, I'm sorry, I, 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 I just need to gather my thoughts. Right, the payment for your services, have you decided on an amount? Arthur Edwards, you have a file on him. Arthur Edwards, how do you? I see, well played. For many, many years, I feared what I'd see when I finally met death. And now you sit before me, and I feel only peace. You see, I believe life is a fair fight, and I lost spectacularly in every way imaginable. It is time for me to leave the pit. Oh, before I get to that, your reward. The file you want is in the safe. A last wish from a dying woman. Get Edwards and make him suffer. So long. I need some privacy. Thank you. No need to panic. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Mission oh. complete. Well done, 47.
Man, you read me. Over. Someone's making trouble. Possibly high on drugs. Good, looking good. Denton does that. The harbour's that. Seriously, Denton? 